Mass Effect 2 is one of the biggest titles of 2010, and while its sci-fi setting makes for a great video game, I'm joined now by Dr. Micho Kaku to help separate fact from fiction. Now, let's start by talking about a part of Mass Effect 2 that seems a little feasible, the invisibility cloaks in combat. How far away are we from actually seeing that technology in the real world? I think in a few decades, we may have something resembling the Harry Potter invisibility cloak. You'll go like this and literally come invisible. With microwave radiation, we can already make an object disappear. Microwave radiation can go around an object, wrap around, reform at the other end as if you are not there at all. Within a few more decades, we hope to have maybe a cylinder. Anyone inside the cylinder would be invisible because light would wrap around the object and reform at the other end. And who knows? The military is funding this research right now. They're not stupid. They realize that, hey, invisible soldiers, invisible tanks, invisible airplanes are much better than stealth bombers, which you can actually see with the naked eye. There's a class of characters in Mass Effect that utilize biotics, which is telekinesis, to shift objects in the room and, and utilize the environment as a weapon. How realistic is that? When we think of psychokinesis, we think of the power of a god, the ability to move objects around us. Actually, with EEG scans and MRI scans, we're now beginning to decode the basic operating system of the mind in some sense. We can actually hook that up now to a computer and have computer move objects. In the future, we'll have superconductors based in different objects. So with the human mind, we'll activate a computer, which will in turn move objects around us. Just like the force, we'll be able to use the power of the mind to energize a computer to literally levitate and move objects around us. We're gonna talk about the mass effect fields now and also dark energy and is it feasible to think of it actually being applied in this universe? Dark energy and dark matter represent the cutting edge of science. In fact, that's what I work on professionally. I work on something called string theory. We think we're the lowest vibration of tiny little strings, but the next vibration could be dark energy and dark matter. In this room, for example, the Earth moves in a wind of dark matter, so there should be dark matter right here. We physicists have not yet found it, but we hope to create it with the Large Hadron Collider outside Geneva, Switzerland. The machine is 17 miles in circumference. We're gonna slam protons at energies not seen since the instant of Genesis itself, and we hope to create higher vibrations of the string, including dark matter. Dark energy is even more fantastic. It's intergalactic. It's what makes the universe accelerate in its expansion. So dark energy is basically the energy of nothing itself. Now, believe it or not, dark matter, dark energy represent most of the universe. Every textbook in high school that you had to struggle with is wrong. Every textbook says the universe is made out of atoms. Wrong. We now know that 73% of the universe is made out of dark energy, the energy of nothing that pushes the galaxies apart. 23% is made out of dark matter, which we hope to create with the Large Hadron Collider. 23% of the universe is made out of stars, hydrogen, helium, and we, we humans, we make up 0.03% of the known universe. So we're the oddballs, we're the backwash. Most of the universe is dark. So the dark matter is possibly responsible for these mass relays in Mass Effect. As Commander Shepard, you use these mass relays, which is a network of jump gates, if you will, throughout the galaxy. Is that feasible to think that you could, we could do that at some point if we do harness this power? The galaxy is 100,000 light years across. So to be able to send a message soaring through from one end of the galaxy to the other end of the galaxy, normally would say, ha, that's impossible until recently. Now we believe that it may be possible to harness something called negative matter. Negative matter is perhaps the dilithium crystals of Star Trek, perhaps the spice of the Dune series. It allows us to open gateways to the fabric of space and time. You see, Einstein's equations have a loophole. When you put negative matter into Einstein's equations, then space and time curl up into knots. Time wraps up into a pretzel. And so it may be possible to build gateways. We're not sure, we're not sure how stable these gateways would be, but perhaps negative matter. Perhaps negative matter is the mass effect. So it's theoretically possible, but you're not guaranteeing that it'll be safe. <laughs> I would not want to be the first to go through a wormhole. 
because we're not sure how stable they are. However, if such a communication web of wormholes is possible, then it could rewrite science fiction. We would rewrite the way we view the whole concept of colonizing the galaxy. Another very effective area of the game is force fields. Force fields are difficult because electricity and magnetism don't conform to the science fiction concept of a force field. Magnetism and electricity, for example, they have force fields, but if I have plastic, plastic will go right through a force field of magnetism and electricity. Therefore, as I see it, it has to be multi-layered. One layer, a mesh of laser beams. Crisscrossing lasers, megawatt lasers that would vaporize anything you throw into it. Then, for matter, you would have to have something that could stop that. You would have to have a web of carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotube fibers are some of the strongest fibers known, stronger than steel, in fact. And so, a web of laser beams, a web of nanotechnology, I think a combination, a multi-layered defense, may in fact give us a force field. Then last, plasma. That's what the sun is made out of, and we can actually make a plasma that separates the air inside a spaceship from the vacuum of outer space. We've already done that at the Brookhaven National Laboratories. So a force field made out of plasma, highly energized matter fields, with lasers, carbon nanotubes, that's the way to go. Easy to remember. Now Mass Effect takes place in the not so distant future, but really how far off are these types of technologies? We're gonna have invisibility in the coming decades. Certain forms of teleportation are possible even today at the atomic level. But the ability to actually roam across the galaxy to the nearby stars, that may take 100, 200 years before we get the first starships off the ground. But to have a galactic civilization, that may take time. Our Earth is a type zero civilization. We get our energy from dead plants. What about 100 years from type one? That's the world of Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon, a planetary civilization. Beyond that is type two, where you colonize a few stars in the galaxy. That's Star Trek, for example, the Federation of Planets. And that's also Mass Effect 2, where the Earth has colonized a few neighboring planets and competes with other civilizations, other type two civilizations, ultimately leading to the formation of type three, which is galactic, like Star Wars. Well, it's all very interesting. Obviously, Mass Effect is a huge game. We appreciate your insight into these very, very interesting topics. And stay tuned to a future episode of Game Trailers TV for more on my conversation of the science of gaming with Dr. Micho Kaku.